years into his reign, the pharaohs still felt strong, and Egyptian tradition dictated that work on his tomb had to continue until his death. With the ground floor finished, and with plenty of time left to build bigger and better, Imhotep set his sights skyward and began a series of expansions that would revolutionize architecture. On top of his mastaba, he added a second smaller one, on top of that, a third, and then a fourth, stacking them like layers of a wedding cake. With his stone blocks holding steady, he decided to go even bigger, extending the four steps out to the west and adding two more on top of those. Djoser's tomb gradually took on a shape unlike anything the Egyptians had ever laid eyes on. The groundbreaking form would come to be known as a step pyramid. It's almost as if Imhotep is working out in architectural form in that one structure. The whole evolution from just simple mounds that existed earlier to a massive statement that sets the tone for pyramids forever after. After nearly two decades of work, Djoser's step pyramid stood 20 stories tall, and surrounding it, an entire complex was under construction that would set a new standard for royal burial sites. To the north, a small palace was built. Adjacent to that were two ceremonial houses, representing Upper and Lower Egypt. Around the entire complex, which was bigger than Yankee Stadium, a massive limestone enclosure wall reached three stories high. Today, as in ancient times, the only way to enter the complex is through a towering gated colonnade that contains the first 40 stone columns ever erected on Earth. Each one rises 33 feet, and the framework surrounding them testifies to the fledgling state of engineering in the age of Imhotep. The architect was afraid his columns might tip over, so he attached each of them to a side wall to provide extra support. They built it this way because they did not understand that you could build a freestanding stone column. So we're in an architectural step here where they're doing trial and error. Djoser died in 2648 BC. His 19-year reign had proven to be an age of unprecedented engineering innovation. As word of his passing spread up and down the Nile, mourners flocked from the farthest corners of Egypt to pay their last respects. There would be a huge procession coming up from the valley with priests, with professional mourners who would be ululating and sort of ripping out their hairs and crying out for the death of the king.